If you're new to this channel, you may consider subscribing and hit the bell icon so that you continue to receive the updates. Please share it with all others who might benefit. Let's get started. In this video, we're going to talk about the rank correlations. So we've already discussed Pearson's correlation, which essentially has certain prerequisites. First is that the variable should be linearly associated and the variable should comply to a certain kind of distribution, which is normal distribution. But not every data is like that. What do we do in case of ordinal variables? When we do not necessarily have a value to talk about, but we want to see if the ranks or the order of the variables move together. In such cases, we apply rank correlations. So let's begin talking about rank correlations. A rank correlation coefficient essentially measures the degree of similarity between two rankings. It can be used to assess the significance of the relationship between them. So Spearman's rank correlation tries to assess the monotonic relationship between the ranks of two variables. We'll just discuss what is monotonic in some time. The formula for Spearman's rank correlation is like this. So we have one minus six times the summation of di squared divided by n multiplied by n squared minus one. What are these terms? So di is the difference between the ranks, the ranks of the variable x and corresponding ranks of the variable y. We are talking about two variables all the time. So xi's are the ranks obtained from variable x and yi's are the ranks obtained from the variable y. And d essentially represents their differences. So these are paired differences. For every x, you have a corresponding y and we are taking a difference between their ranks. n here is the number of paired ranks and we can define the order of ranks ourselves while working on the Spearman's correlation. So we'll see how these ranks are assigned as we move to the hands-on example. Let's first understand what are these monotonic functions. So when we talk about monotonic functions, there are two possibilities. So a function is monotonically increasing if for every x1 and x2 in its domain, if x1 is less than or equal to x2, then f of x1 is also less than or equal to f of x2. What does it mean? The values corresponding to x1 on the y-axis would also be behaving similarly. If x1 is less than or equal to x2, the y1 value would also be less than or equal to y2 value. So visually, this would look like this. So you can see this function is always increasing. On the x-axis, as you move forward, you see an increase in the values of x. And at all times when the value of x is increasing, the value of y is also increasing. That's what it simply means. Likewise, we have monotonically decreasing functions. In this case, for every x1 which is less than or equal to x2, the f of x1 is greater than or equal to f of x2. So we are talking about decreasing functions, which will look like this. So for every value on x-axis, as the values of x increase, the value of y is only decreasing. So Spearman's rank correlation particularly is helpful when your variables exhibit a monotonically increasing or decreasing relationship. So to visually understand our data could be something like this. Now, if you see, this data is not linear. This is more of a curve kind of a shape that you see here. So we can, of course, force fit a line in this case, but you can imagine this line would not be able to do justice to this kind of data. So when we apply this line, at, let's say we do Pearson's correlation in this case, we found out that the value of Pearson's correlation was 0.96, which is pretty high. Now, we've discussed in Anscombe's quartet also that the Pearson's correlation loses its meaning the moment your variables do not exhibit linear relationship. So that's one and the same thing. But for the same data, if we calculate the Spearman's rank correlation, we find a value which is 0.99. Now, it's not about the value is high. The fact is that Pearson's correlation is not suitable when the data is not linearly associated, whereas Spearman's rank correlation would be a preferred choice in cases where the variables exhibit a monotonic relationship like this. Second point is, the nature of the data is different. Pearson's correlation coefficient requires the data to be continuous in nature. Spearman's rank correlation requires the data to have ranks available. Now let's quickly talk about the properties of Spearman's correlation coefficient. It tries to assess the monotonic relationship between the two variables. It's a non-parametric measure, which means it does not assume any specific distribution, like a normal distribution for the data. It's particularly useful when you're dealing with the ordinal data. And the range of Spearman's rank correlation, again, is from negative one to one. The extreme values represent perfect monotonic relationship, while zero indicates no monotonic relationship in the data. Next, we will take an example problem, which we'll try to solve manually, and then we'll try to solve the same problem very easily in Python. So let's say we have to find a relationship between the two variables. One is the exercise done, and the other is the weight loss. We could have captured this data in minutes for exercise done and weight loss in kilograms. And we are talking about finding the rank correlation. 
let's get some data. So this is our data. We have just nine paired observations and we will try to now perform calculations. The main thing here is to assign the ranks. Let's begin solving this problem. Let's assume that exercise done is the X variable and weight loss is the Y variable. The first step here would be to calculate the ranks for X and Y. Now we can do it in any order. Important is to be consistent. So for example, you may say that the higher the value you want to give it a better rank. Let's say rank one would be given to a variable with maximum value. Or you might say that you give the lowest value rank one. Important is not what you specifically follow. Important is that what you follow is what you consistently follow. So in this case, we choose to work with the first approach. The higher the value, the better the rank, which, which means rank one will be given to the value with the highest magnitude. So in this case, 24 gets a rank one and the smallest value that we have, which is 10, gets a rank nine. Likewise, in case of Y variable, the highest value that we have is 46, that gets a rank one. And the smallest value that we have is 30, that gets a rank nine. Let's just quickly populate these values and then get the same stuff done for the variable Y. Now we have to calculate the difference between the ranks. So we have to take the difference between rank of X and rank of Y. That is the difference that we get. Now these differences could be positive or negative, but we have to do a D square. We saw that in the formula as well. So we will square all these values and sum them up. Next, we will apply the specific formula for Spearman's rank correlation, which is one minus six times the sum of the I square divided by N and square minus one. Let's apply this. So di square, if we add that column that we saw on the previous slide, it will be adding up to 72. n in our case is nine, so we will get the value nine here, and n square, which will be 81, 81 minus one would be 80. So when we solve this, we get a value which is one minus 0. 0.6, and that leads us to 0. 0.4. That's the Spearman's rank correlation coefficient for the specific data that we talked about. Now let's see how do we find it in Python? Do we get a similar value or we get something else? So the method to find out the value of Spearman's rank correlation is called Spearman R, and that's available in the SciPy library of Python. What we've done is we've created two separate lists for both the variables that we had in our data, nine observations in each. This is the exact same data that you saw on the slides. And then what we have to do is we simply have to call the Spearman R, pass this data, and we'll be able to calculate the Pearson's correlation coefficient. This also generates a p-value in case you're doing hypothesis testing, but that's not what our motivation is right now. So we will just be calculating the row or the Pearson's correlation coefficient. Let's just run this. We got 0.4 as the answer when we did it manually. We're getting roughly 0.4 here also as the answer. So this is Spearman's rank correlation. Useful when your data does not necessarily follow a linear relationship, but follows a monotonically increasing or decreasing relationship. There's just one more possibility related to the rank correlations that we need to discuss, and that's related to the repetition of values. So we were able to give the rankings in the previous data because none of the values were repeated. What if we have some data which has some repeated values? Some values occur multiple times. How do you discriminate? How do you assign them ranks? So let's say we have a value which is 20 and 20 appears twice in our data. How are we going to deal with that? Let's say first it appears at the rank six and then it appears at rank seven. So are you going to give it different ranks? Will that be fair? No, in such cases we take an average rank. So the normal working would be exactly the same as we did earlier. For the values which show a tie, we assign an average rank. Let's say three values show a tie, then take an average of those three. So that's what we do in case of ties. In general, it is not good to have too many ties in the data. If you have too many ties, and if you have issues with the monotonicity of the data, then there is another type of correlation that works, which is known as the Kendall's tau. But that's a little beyond our scope right now, so we'll not talk about it. So we'll quickly talk about the assumptions related to Spearman's rank correlation. In a way, we've already discussed these. So Spearman's rank correlation is meaningful, particularly for ordinal data, and it can work even for the data which is of the interval or ratio scale. It doesn't have to be only ordinal, because even if the original data has interval or ratio values or continuous values, we can convert it to ranks and then work on it. So finally, it works on the orders of the ranks only, but anything from ordinal data onwards can be taken up for Spearman's rank correlation. Next is, it assumes that there is a monotonic relationship between the two variables. And like we discussed, if this is not the case, then we may want to work with a separate kind of correlation that's known as the Kendall's tau. Variables should be paired. Correlation is a concept of paired variables. So you can't have just one variable X and no Y correspondingly or vice versa. You have to have both the variables paired. We do not want too many ties in our data. That's another point. So we want the data to be free from ties. If we have some ties, 
then we may want to resolve them by assigning an average rank. And last assumption is pretty much the common assumption for all types of correlations. We should have sufficient data. With one or two or three or four paired observations alone, you'll not be able to get a very strong sense of correlations. So it is important that we have a decent sample size on which we are working and trying to assess the correlations. That's about the Spearman's rank correlation. Next, we'll be talking about the biserial correlations.